together three times and repeat after me, there's no place like home. The Pirates follow the black and gold road back to where they've been at their best and where they've been one of the best teams in the majors over the past three seasons. And that's at PNC Park. Following last night's 7-3 win in Game 1 over Washington, it's Game 2 of the Bucks and Nats in this four-game series at PNC Park. And Game 2 begins right now on Root Sports. It's another busy night out on Federal Street. The North Shore buzzing with activity. Another packed house expected at PNC Park as the Pirates take on the Washington Nationals in game two of this four-game series. Hi again, everybody, with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverett. Robbie Smikowski will join us shortly. Pirates winning game one last night. Tonight, they get to face Max Scherzer for the first time since the 20th of June when he no-hit the Bucks. And when the Pirates hitters go to the plate, Steve, what will they be thinking about when it comes to Scherzer? Well, hopefully not uh, what happened uh, on June 20th. Uh, they want to get that out of their mind. And uh, you wonder what the approach is going to be. This guy, not only with that no-hitter, but he's good all the time. So uh, it's going to be a challenge. And he had that no-hitter. He got good defensive help when he needed to. And uh, what, what you hope you, you don't want to do as a hitter, you don't want to try too hard. You hope that he makes a couple mistakes and you're guessing the right location or the right type of a pitch and uh, that you can take advantage of one or two opportunities. But uh, he's just tough all the time. Try not to do too much. Take your shot. Try to get a pitch you can handle and then hope Jeff Locke is, is as good as he's been the last seven starts. Well, Matt Scherzer hasn't given up a run against the Pirates in his last 19 innings, but that means the Pirates offense is probably due. Last night they got off to a good start. Pedro Alvarez, an opposite field home run. Andrew McCutcheon getting into the act. And the catcher, Francisco Cervelli, hit one, two. Yeah, it's good to get this kind of offensive support. Everybody digs the long ball, especially if you're out there pitching for the Pirates. So this is what they're capable of. You'd love to see them continue to swing the bats and get the, the offense going and really support this pitching staff. Pirates hope to keep the bats going and do it again against the Washington Nationals, searching for a win in game two. Jeff Locke, Max Scherzer, the pitching matchup lineups and first pitch coming up.
White Lake Fire bringing us into Friday Night Rocks on Route Sports. Packed house tonight at PNC Park. They'll be dancing as they get ready for this one. The Buckos looking for a win here in game two and a little bit of redemption against Max Scherzer. Yeah, and uh, what you got to hope for is that he makes a couple mistakes because he is just awfully good. If he's as good tonight as he was on June 20th, you just tip your cap and get ready for Saturday night. But, uh, uh, you know, somebody's beaten this guy eight times. I don't know how that's happened, but uh, he is awfully good. He's, he's good every night. And uh, to me, he's one of the best in the National League, if not in the major leagues right now. But this guy in the mouth of the Pittsburgh Pirates has a better ERA in the last seven starts than Max Scherzer has. So Jeff Locke has been very, very good, keeping the ball down, uh, getting ahead in the count, making them chase stuff downstairs. So uh, the Pirates coming off a real feel-good win last night, an important win after a miserable road trip. They settled all the panic down. They scored a bunch of runs. They pitched well. Liriano was sensational early, and we'll hope for more tonight. Let's take a look at the Nationals lineup, written up by manager Matt Williams. Taylor Espinosa, Harper, Wilson Ramos, Ian Desmond last night, two for four. He hit his 100th career home run. Tyler Moore will play first base. Dan Udlow at second. Matt Dendecker gets the start in left field. Clint Robinson, a late scratch due to illness. And then a the pitcher, Max Scherzer, batting ninth against the lefty, Jeff Locke. Yep, five and six on the year for Jeff, but he has been very, very good his last seven starts. You just hope that he can keep doing that. And, uh, you know, pressuring the guys of the right hand batters with a fastball inside using the change up the curveball uh, to finish them off and, and we talked about getting out in front making them chase but he has been really really terrific in his recent outings let's hope he can continue to do it make good pitches you got a good chance Francisco Liriano made some good pitches oh, last night ever. what a show he put on early in that ball game that was as dominant as you can really look for in a pitcher and when he's right uh, he's he's as good as any lefty in the league you know you talk about Kershaw and some others okay I'll give you that but he's very good defensively for the Pirates Francisco Cervelli completes the battery tonight and it's around the infield left to right gun Florman Walker and Alvarez Marte McCutcheon and Polanco in the outfield Pedro Florman makes his second start for the Pirates. It did start a game in Kansas City on the road trip the day he was called up. Two Pedros in the lineup. Yep. And Jeff Locke is going to put the ball in play. Defense is the key tonight. You want to have good defense. You're going to have to catch the ball, throw the ball. First pitch in is a strike to Michael Taylor. Taylor went 0 for 4 last night with a strikeout, hitting 230. He's been filling in nicely at center field for Washington. Well, Denard Spann has been out. He played more left field this year than anything else, but due to the fact that Matt Williams' team is a number of guys injured, Taylor's had to move over to center field. There's your signature Jeff Locke with a changeup. Batter out in front on the swing. That's an early commitment, so even the ball the ball's not near the strike zone, you've already committed, uh, you're done. Yeah. And the pitch on the left side foul. These uh, early swing commitments create those awkward looking swings and misses with balls that are nowhere near the strike zone downstairs. So uh, I've seen more than that more of that than this year than I've seen in a long time. One two pitch. Two and two. And Jeff Locke is Steve I would let me if you'd agree with this that he is in the best stretch since the beginning of the 2013 season. Yes. As he strikes out Michael Taylor to start the game. Yep, he's out there with a lot of confidence. I mean he's expecting to do well not hoping. So he's off to a good start. Strike out to begin this ball game. Right there and uh, just swung through it. Is that one of those pitches Steve where you you look back later and so you're glad to get away with. Yeah both parties would like to have that pitch back. <laughs> Jeff doesn't want to throw too many right there and uh, Taylor's thinking I should have done something with that. It worked out fine for Locke. Danny Espinosa the switch hitter. Played all around the infield for the Nationals this year playing third base tonight. Is that fastball inside home plate umpire Scott Perry. Uh, we'll see a lot of that from Locke and Jeff hopes to get some calls uh, 
on those deliveries. 1 0 pitch. You see Scott Barry. Steve mentioned him. He is calling the balls and strikes tonight. The crew chief, Ted Barrett, is at first base. Chris Conroy, the umpire at second, Gabe Morales at third tonight. 2 0 coming to Espinosa. Popped him up. Walker calling for it. And Neil Walker will make out number two. Well, let's take a look at uh, tonight's tips to win. From, uh, sponsored by Rivers Casino. Bob mentioned this last night, and it still applies tonight. It's going to apply all weekend. If you can control Bryce Harper, you've got a leg up on this Washington team that uh, is quite compromised physically. Aggressive against Scherzer, both in the count and the game. You try to get the good ones early in the count, per at bat, or in the ball game, first two or three innings. The good ones get tougher as the games go along. Harper with two outs and nobody on. He is just five for 26 in his career at PNC Park. They get five for 27 as Florman throws him out. A one, two, three, top of the first inning. Jeff Locke gets him in order. Pirates coming to bat when we return. Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go, box. Not a bad place to be in a boat on the Allegheny River on a Friday night, a gorgeous night here in Pittsburgh. Bottom of the first inning, Pirates coming up for the first time. We look at Clint Hurdle's Toyota lineup. Gregory Polanco leads off, Neil Walker, then McCutcheon, Marte, Young, Alvarez, followed by Cervelli. Florman bats eighth, and Locke will hit ninth against right-hander Max Scherzer. So here's the challenge for the Pittsburgh Pirates tonight. As you take a look at the numbers for this right-hander, one of the best in the game. Still don't know who beat him eight times. Three complete games, two shots, and a one no hitter. So. And the funny thing about the game that he pitched against the Pirates, Steve, on the 20th of June, was that everybody said the game he pitched right before that against Milwaukee, where he struck out a career high 16, was even better. I'll tell you, it's uh, it, he, he was absolutely dominant. I've never, I've, I've not in a lot of years seen a pitcher that put so much pressure. Uh, to, from pitch one hit, he had the pressure on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Another interesting note: he one hit the Brewers, then no hit the Pirates in back-to-back -back starts. And Scherzer had a hit in each one of those games. He actually out-hit his opponents in two straight games. Yeah, but was he as dominant as Liriano was last night? It was like Eddie Fainer, the king in his court. <laughs> he basically <laughs> he didn't need any fielders. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way. 
the king and his court did it for one, years. One two pitch to Polanco. He's out on strikes. Well, Polanco strikes out looking. And there's one out for the Pirates. So I don't want to say here we go again, but he paints the outside corner. His control is absolutely impeccable. Absolutely impeccable. In 19 starts, he has walked 13, or no, I'm sorry, 15. 15 walks. That, I mean, that's that's silly. Hasn't walked a batter in his last six starts. So He's going to give you strikes. Well, that's what we're talking about, the tips to win. You know, be aggressive early because if, if you're not, you're going to be behind in the count. And that puts him a leg up on you. Well, one to Neil Walker. Slap foul, and it's nothing in two. And we talk about approach uh, with a guy like this. You know, don't change a lot of things. Uh, hope that he makes some mistakes. Uh, hope you can uh, have a good at bat. You try to hit the ball over the fence, or you try to do too much. You're playing right into his hands. Be yourself. Hope it's good enough on a given night. 0-2 toward the middle. Ian Desmond there. Two out. Walker is 0 for 1. With two outs, Scherzer will now face Andrew McCutcheon. He's 30 year old, uh, soon to be 31, out of St. Louis. Scherzer. crew, excited to see Kutch back up. Yeah, they were liking it last night when he hit that ball way out of here to right center field. He estimated the distance at 411 feet, that two run homer in the seventh. A wave and a miss, that ball tailed away from McCutcheon. Big sweeping breaking ball. Now they might call that a slider. They might call it a curve. I call it a breaking ball because that pitch right there broke a lot more than the old pure slider. It's ahead, nothing in two. I would think the Pirates would be aggressive in certain at bats tonight because they know they're going to see strikes. And Clint Hurdle indicated today that if a hitter Goes to the plate and they see what they like early. They want to try to square it up early. Yeah, because he's going to, if he gets ahead, he's just going to be working the corners and all over the place. Yep, you see something early, take a, take a whack out. And you know, the thing is, we talk about the no hitter and how it might be so difficult to hit him. It's tough getting major league hitters out. You know, it's, it's, it's tough to dominate, although you've seen a dominant inning both from Locke and Scherzer. Pirates gone one, two, three. We'll go to the second. Is out running around the edge of the infield as he continues to rehab. Can't catch the ball yet. Can't swing the bat yet. He's the subject of our Allegheny Health Network injury update. You see the, the thumb still wrapped up after surgery, but Josh working with trainer Todd Tomzik today. Still doing what he can to stay in shape and stay ready to go. 
Also got an update on uh, relief pitcher Rob Scahill. Expected to throw on flat ground and then a bullpen this weekend. Maybe one more bullpen before he goes out on a rehab stint. But uh, Josh figuring to be back for the run in September. And that will be a good thing for the Pirates. You just uh, you want him to get healthy and then major league game healthy too, game ready. Because uh, your your body feels good, but you have not seen major league pitching. Uh, been forced to make major league plays, so that always a a factor when the body gets well. A little bit sooner than later. Wilson Ramos, the catcher, 246 average, so he'll one pitch outside, one ball, and one strike. And one other thing about both. Harrison and Mercer expected back around the same time you hope uh, maybe early September Jordy hopes to be back sooner and then when you get into late August you, you have to find a place for them to get some at bats against live pitching and then when the minor league season ends if you get into September you might run out of places yeah. to simulate some games for him Two balls and two strikes to Ramos. Another confident delivery behind the count. Two and one, not afraid to go off speed, stay away from the fastball that the hitter's looking for. I think that's in page one or two of the pitcher's handbook. Is it? <laughs> that's a big page, page yeah, one. It, 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 very important stuff. Two, two, strike three call. Second punch out for Locke tonight. One gone for Washington in the second. Take a look. You're going to like what you see. Up and in. That's better than up and over the middle of the plate. But somewhat of a dangerous area. If they're looking in that neighborhood, those are the kind of balls that can be hooked down the left field line. And Desmond taking. Rock. Yeah, rock on Friday night. Tim, you rock. I rock. Yeah, well, Everybody's rock. rocking. Did you think that sign was four rock when you first saw it? No, it didn't have a four there for his home run total. Oh, okay. Didn't have rock four. And the one one. And, uh, <laughs> he's, waiting. he's waiting for the arrival of Ramos Ramirez tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to change that T-shirt for you starting tomorrow night. Two one to Desmond. Three and one now. Jeff falls behind. So the trade made yesterday, and Ramirez was on the road with the Brewers, so he had to go back to Milwaukee, take care of some things today, and is on his way to Pittsburgh and expected to be in the lineup playing third base tomorrow. John Hole fires to first, and Desmond is out. Two gone. A lot of people have been asking me about all the success of the Pirates at home. They're pitching better at home. They're hitting better at home. I, to me, it's a wonderful coincidence that they, they, uh, they don't come back home saying they, they don't come off a road trip. All right, we're going to play better now that we're in home. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. You're, you're going to try as hard on the road, and, and uh, I, I don't know why it happens. It's just a wonderful thing because you're doing it in front of your home hometown fans. So that's that's the the real plus of it. But once you go out there to play, you're not thinking, where am I tonight? Am I going to play harder because I'm in Pittsburgh? No, that doesn't work that way. The, it, Love seeing it. Well, it's in the place you play the majority of your games. I mean, you feel comfortable when you yeah, play. Yeah, you feel home, comfortable. Right? I don't think it makes you perform better. Uh, but uh, it's sort of working out that way. One and one to Tyler Moore. Moore was originally in the lineup in left field tonight with Clint Robinson at first base. Robinson had played left field last night, but Robinson took ill this afternoon late. Matt Williams was forced to make a lineup change. Moore playing first base. And Matt Den Decker who will bat after Dan Ungler in the eighth spot playing left field tonight. Well, we won nine out of our last ten home games. Locke has been terrific here at home. The Longs are terrific somewhere. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh. Jeff has struck out three. Retired the first six nationals rocking on a Friday Night Rocks on Root Sports.
No score in the UPMC scoreboard. Bottom of the second inning. Starling Marte will lead off for the Pirates. And we're still looking for a base runner. Against Scherzer. Only one this season against Max. And that was uh, Jose Tabata. We all remember that. So Scherzer facing Marte. Swing and a miss. Starling. When's, when's the last time we've seen a double perfect perfect game by both pitchers? That ever happened? I don't think it's ever happened. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it looks like that tonight. Strike two to Marte. Our Barrel Automotive League leaders stat. Take a peek at that. Infield hit leaders. D. Gordon of Miami. You figure he'd be right up there, and he is at the top of the list. Starling Marte next, 25. He had an infield hit last night. Let's see Billy Hamilton of Cincinnati would also figure to be on that list. Marte's batting average coming into the game tonight, 291. He has a number of infield hits. 12 three hit games, Steve. That's getting it done. And, and in those three hit games, a number of times he did have either a bunt base hit or he beat out a high chopper. His arrow is pointing up right now. He is uh, just really, really becoming quite a baseball player. Right back to Scherzer. One out for the Pirates in the second inning. Yep, soon to be 31 years old. He was uh, first round pick by Arizona back in 2006. Came over to Detroit in a trade after the 09 season and then free agency over to the Nationals. Eighth major league season for Scherzer. 101 and 58 is a career record to this point. Jung Ho Gun, the batter. He takes a strike. He has five straight multi hit games. And over his last 15 games, Steve Jung Ho is hitting 382. He's 21 for 55. And bangs a hit toward left center field. And the Pirates with a base runner. Jung Ho continues to hit. All right, six straight games. For the Korean star. All right, just one pitcher eligible for a perfect game at this point. Just wonder if this kind of base hit and a solid base hit just makes everybody in the dark. Okay, let's relax a little bit. You know, people get hits, people give up hits. Uh, that thing uh, in June was very unique. Yep, I'll give you that, but we're going to start from scratch and take our chances here. So they hit on the board for the Buccos. And Pedro Alvarez facing Scherzer. Strike one. Pedro had an opposite field homer last night. By the way, Scherzer has given up 10. There he is. The likeness is incredible. Yep. Oh, one pitch to Pedro. Oh, boy! El Toro strikes again! Look out, Allegheny! Two nothing Pirates! And that's sweet cheese on a stick. How about that? Talk about lighting up a crowd? That's Friday night rocking right there. Right yeah. in between the kayaks. We got a floater. Well, the river patrol, we got a floater. A river ball for El Toro. Ole. Rock and roll. That's a celebration in the dugout. Just the settling down of the crowd right now. You listen to the buzz of the ballpark. It's amazing. Oh. Wasn't much question about that one. Right off the bat, no doubter. For Scherzer, the 11th home run he's given up this year. And those are the first runs the Pirates have scored against Max Scherzer since June 23rd, 2012. And there's the journey to the river. And 
There it is. It's the second river ball this year for Pedro. First one went in on the fly. This one went in on a bounce. And uh -huh. Good night to be in the kayak. It's like a uh, oh they they swung horse. and missed yeah. right there. They were trying for an oar save. They throw it in reverse. Cervelli down on strikes. Third strikeout for Scherzer. Yeah. From this angle, that's that's your launch angle. That's like Cape Canaveral. That's fun to look at. Pedro Florimond had his first hit as a Pittsburgh Pirate last night. Pirates shortstop, five seasons in the big leagues, mostly with the Minnesota Twins, a 204 average. You know, we were talking before the game. You know, you got to take advantage of any opportunity you get against Scherzer. Well, sometimes the opportunities come quickly in the form of a hitter, a hittable ball. Pedro took advantage of that opportunity. Instant offense. Well, we talked about it last night. We hope that this could be the start of something for Pedro after he hit his home run. So he does hit him in bunches when he gets rolling. And that floor bond strikes out. Two runs on the board. Max Scherzer gives up a long one to Pedro Alvarez. Waiting for another one. Pedro Alvarez is now the club leader in home runs with 14. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. And keep in mind, Steve, he's the club leader with one more home run than McCutcheon, one more home run than Marte, and he's done it in far fewer at bats than either of them. Well, if he gets hot and, and goes on a, a, a tear, it, uh, it makes all the difference for this baseball team. He didn't. He doesn't hit the cheap ones. Three men on the left side of the infield for the second baseman Dan Uglo, who follows this pitch back. Uglo hitting 192 for the Nationals. Uglo with the Marlins at first, and the Braves. And we saw him last year early in the season with the Giants. Things didn't work out there. And now he's found himself this year. In Washington. Point Park University tweets with their reaction to <laughs> El Toro's homer. Going to be impressive. El Toro power. And there's your quote, Steve. We've got a floater. Yep. All the river patrol. To right field. And Polanco gathers it in.
One out. There's Matt Dendecker. Dendecker pinch hit on the ninth. Last night got a base hit. And Taylor ended up ending the game. Cameron Arrow finished it up. But then Decker, former Mets prospect, he had some time in the big leagues with New York. Takes a strike. One out, base is empty. And a ground ball, floor mine. Throws him out. Two down. Well, Pedro Forma on a glove guy, really. I mean, he, he can't hit, but really a defensive shortstop. Saw him there just circle behind the baseball and make a nice, easy throw. Well, he plays the position with a lot of confidence uh, and, and, and nice tempo, smooth. The pitcher, Max Scherzer, takes strike one. Well, I was impressed, and I think a lot of people were impressed with what Florman did in spring training. And some thought he, had, he did enough. Perhaps to head north with a ball club, but there was not much room at the end in terms of infield at the time. Plays it with confidence, just as Jeff Locke is throwing it with confidence right now. In those games he's waiting to get the ball, get the sign, throw the baseball, get the job done. Scherzer this year is nine for 40. 25 hit. One ball, two strikes. Scherzer was outspoken a little bit when he was signed by the Nationals, saying that he thought the National League should have a DH. Jeff Locke strikes out his fourth man of the game. Two nothing Pirates. Now's your chance, everybody but Steve. Reserve your spot today for the Pirates Fantasy Camp Weekend at PNC Park, September 18th and 19th. Your team will be captained by a former Pirates player. You'll get your own authentic uniform and play all your games right on the field at PNC Park. For more information on how to reserve your spot, call 1 800 5 Bucks. You gonna be one of those coaches? Uh, no, actually, I'm at uh, I'm in Connecticut with my little golf tournament uh, and our 55th high school reunion uh, during that time, but. Uh, you know, you talk about a former pirate uh, player, Mr. Bill Mazeroski was on uh, hand tonight to be introduced as one of the franchise four. They were recognizing franchise fours uh, 
uh, for all the major league teams and Naz part of that foursome and what a foursome it is Hall of Famer Bill Nazaroski one of the best ever he and Willie and Roberto and Honus Wagner four pretty good representatives of this franchise's talent riches. Jeff Locke leading off the pirate half of the third inning he's got a 2 1 count. Two balls and one strike. Here's the pitch to Jeff. Strike call. I know that you tell the story when you first got to the Pirates after their 1960 championship season. You saw Maz and you, you felt like you were now in the University of Baseball. Oh, yeah. Here's one of my professors. Yep. It's an efficient job by Scherzer. So Locke strikes out. Scherzer now with five strikeouts. Roberto Clemente, part of that quartet. One of the first things Maz told me when I got to the big leagues, he said, no, nope, no excuses. Absolutely no excuses. You're in the big leagues now. People want to know why you did, not why you didn't. They don't care why you didn't. They want to know why you did. So all kind of good advice. What a, what a teammate. Maz, Willie, Roberto. Imagine playing in front of three all stars, you know, pitching in front of uh, three Hall of Famers, rather. Polanco thought he pulled the bat back, but Wilson Ramos, the catcher, peeled down to the umpire at third game. Morales, he rung up a strike on him, saying that he offered that the pitch. 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. And the pitch from Scherzer to Polanco. Outside low. I mean, here you were just a kid out of Connecticut, 18 years old. You walked into the World Champions yeah. Clubhouse, spring, spring training. training. Yeah, 18, 18 years old. That was quite an experience. Maz also had another great one. He said, "Don't ever forget, the name on the front of your uniform is more important than the name on the back." Wonderfully simple, great words of wisdom. Two-two to Polanco. Him out a second time, Scherzer struck him out. And I think we've got Max Scherzer's attention. He's an angry, he's Mad Max now. He is Mad Max from Thunderdome. He struck out four in a row, six in the game after Pedro's home run. Yep. He'll work the stage. He'll he'll stalk around, stomp around, whether good things or bad things are happening. And that's 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 just a wonderful indication of what a competitor he is. He can't wait to get out there. He loves the action. And he's got the stuff to back it up. One ball, no strikes. Neil Walker grounded out to the shortstop Desmond in the first inning. Foul tip for yeah. a strike. Scherzer reminds me a little bit of Tom Seaver, not body wise, but in that he has overpowering stuff to spots with his good control. That's the way Seaver was. Thicker body for Tom Seaver. And Walker base hit. Third hit of the night for the Pirates, and Walker aboard with two down. It, it, it's hard being perfect out there in the mound. These are major league hitters. Throw the ball right there. You're going to get stung every once in a while. Walker sits safely now in 14 of 15 career games against the Nationals at PNC Park. So safely in three straight. Neil has two hitting streaks this year of 10 games each. McCutcheon struck out first time up. Holds up that time. Swung at that pitch. The first time he was up, that's the first pitch Scherzer offered him. Yeah, the big sweeper. That's what the first base umpire Ted Barrett would see. Maybe it's the fact that that bat didn't come across the foul line in terms of direction. This foul passed Nick Labor down at first base. Nick. Wearing number 16. 
I didn't see Nick today. I was going to ask him if this is going to be the last night he gets that. That's uh, Ramos Ramirez's number. Born for a lot of years, both here and in Milwaukee. We don't know. Sometimes they change, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they make deals. Sometimes there's a barter system. Perhaps a new car. Maybe. Could be a Give me deal. a number. Of, buy a Corvette. Remember when AJ Burnett first came here, he wanted his number 34. Daniel McCutcheon had it. Mm -hmm. And AJ said, I'll give you, I'll set up a, a college fund for your soon to be born child for number 34. I got to make that deal. And Daniel McCutcheon said, uh, how, how quickly do you want it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah where do I sign? So. One, two. Hold foul. And the way out in front of that. Delivery by Scherzer. Drive. Drove all the way from Washington, D.C. Got himself a PNC souvenir. Not a bad drive. A lot of Pirates fans make that drive the other way. Yep. Here comes the one two to McCutcheon. Shows a long pause. He was never going to nope. throw that ball. <laughs> he was holding. Yep. McCutcheon with the all star logo still on his helmet. Why wouldn't you leave it on there? Shows are an all star as well. Hits it to right center. Taylor on the run. He'll make the catch for the third out of the inning. A run to hit a man left. Ahead of the fourth, 2 0 Pirates. Farm game break. The St. Louis Cardinals acquired right handed reliever Steve Ciszek from the Miami Marlins for a double A pitcher. Ciszek saved 73 games for the Marlins from 2013 to 14, but he struggled a bit this year, posting a 2 and 6 record with a 450 ERA and just three saves. Back to Tim and Steve now at PNC Park. Guys. Well, thank you very much, Rob. Steve Ciszek, now a Cardinal. Yep, everybody. Starting to shore up their bullpens and seeing what kind of deals might be possible available. And that will continue long after the, the July 31st date. Cardinals at home tonight against Atlanta. Michael Taylor, the leadoff man, center fielder, takes a strike. Well, Locked guess, guess who is, uh, excuse me, Tim, I'm yeah. sorry, guess who the pitching story is tonight? It's Jeff Locke. Jeff Locke. Right now. Hope it stays that way. Taylor bounces this one foul for strike two. When Jeff is really pitching well, he's changing speeds. He's got that fastball, which is plenty good enough. But then he's got the curveball and, and, and the change up. And he's throwing strikes with him. So he's not just throwing strikes with one pitch. He's able to throw strikes mixing all three pitches up. 
at different speeds, uh, different directions. Trying for that back door. Breaking ball that looks like it's going to stay outside and then at the last minute. Tries to come back in over the corner. Didn't quite come in far enough. Struck him out. Then you come back. Down and in. Strike up over five for Locke. Now, Steve, look at this. If you watch strike three here. Since the 12th of June, Locke has the ninth lowest ERA in the National League, 196. And in that same time period, Max Scherzer has been dominant at, night, at times. He's the 11th with an ERA of 201. So Locke's ERA since mid June has been better than Scherzer's. And, and you look at that strikeout, the two last, the last two pitches, he tried for the backdoor breaking ball, didn't quite work. So he goes down and in. Instead of away, he's down and in. And so a different direction. Same kind of breaking ball. Got him to chase. He's doing a lot of pitching. This is the guy is pitching to me. One ball and one strike. Pirates are 15 and 5 in the last 20 home starts for Jeff Locke. And trust me, Jeff is trying just as hard on the road. Believe me. Well, his last seven starts, he's had a number of road starts. Yep. And his last start in Milwaukee, he got into the eighth inning. And he, he would have more wins. Take, take a look at the starts, uh, the scores in those last seven starts. Not a lot of offensive support from the Pirate Bats. Could be even better than five and six. Well, the Pirates just gave him one run of support on Sunday in, Mo in Milwaukee, and Jeff went seven and a third. He ended up giving up three earned runs, but uh, it was an error that helped lead to that and struck out three. Not a lot of offensive support tonight, but you really didn't expect much. Maybe he can make it stand up. Well, that remains two and two to Danny Espinosa. That's uh, it's like everybody that pitches very very well. You you want to uh, have the youngsters look at this because changing speeds is the whole foundation. Fast slow. Uh, there's always variations on the theme. You know breaking balls, trick pitches, but it's fast then slow, slow fast, changing speeds. Espinosa, number of. Uh, his teammates in the big leagues from college. He went to Long Beach State. Jared Hughes of the Pirates from Long Beach State. Allegheny Health Network Super Mall slowing down the swing and the pitch. Jumped out of there. Again the 2 2. Sometimes we get pitching so cluttered. The basic thing is. If, if, if you throw it slow enough and they're on front, they've got nothing left but their hands. And if you throw it fast enough, they're too late. They're going to hit foul down the right field line if you're a right hand batter. It's just uh, out in front or behind. That's the way you want the, the hitters to be. And they're off bounce, awkward swings. It's wonderful to see young pitchers watch a pitcher work. And you're watching a pitcher tonight. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Here's the payoff. And he walked it. Well, the Nationals with a man aboard, and let's go downstairs and check in with Robbie and Smikowski. Robbie. Well, Bryce Harper is in his fourth year of Major League Baseball, and he's still just 22 years of age. And get this, it took until a month and a half ago for Harper to finally face a pitcher younger than him. It was June 10th when he faced Jacob Lindgren of the New York Yankees. That was the first time he's faced a pitcher younger than him. Now it took 554 games, 2,303 plate appearances, and he had faced, get this, 405 different pitchers before facing Lindgren. Now get this resume. Two All-Star appearances, a Rookie of the Year award, and if he stays at the current pace, could win an MVP all before turning 23. I wasn't even out of my parents' house by 23, Tim. <laughs> well, they, they wanted that. Yeah. But, uh, they did. Uh, and and uh, let's not leave out a, a possible triple crown with the, the numbers he's putting up. Wouldn't that be something? 
Well, Locke had retired the first 10 straight before walking Espinosa. One ball and one strike now to Bryce Harper. Oh, oh there's my question, favorite. Bro. That, that's a Harper quote from a couple of years ago. Uh, he was asked a question. I can't remember the question offhand, but that was uh, Bryce's answer. And it makes for a good T-shirt. Well, it, yeah, I, I could give you another impression of what I thought of that. It was a, a one of the media trying to do his job, and he got that kind of response from a 20-year-old, 21-year-old. Uh, <laughs> that's not my favorite kind of thing. I, I will never doubt this young man's talent, but I, I wasn't crazy about that. But anyway, yeah, that's just not National League. That's MLB. That's everybody. He's in the top five in all those categories, including first in OPS on base plus slugging. Three and one now. And the thing is, uh, Bryce Harper is like every other left hand batter, it, it's a little different feel. For them when they're facing a left hand pitcher and it's just just the way it is it's it, it's not quite as comfortable as the ball coming from the different angle from the other side that uh, you get a better look at you just don't uh, see as many lefties as you do righties so it's a little little bit less comfort that ball hit pretty hard. Yeah, Tony Tarasco the first base coach had to hit the deck. He's still quick. Uh, I don't even know if he got out of the way in time. It's hard to get out of the way in time. That reaction. Well, yeah, he did. Good reaction. So many times you'll see the first base coach, third base coach ducking after the ball is past them. 3 2. Walked it. Back to back walks. And now the time runs at first base with one out. Will face the catcher Wilson Ramos, who can be a double play candidate. He hit into one last night in the sixth inning. But, uh, Jeff off the rail a little bit here after uh, a quick strikeout to start the fourth. And that's how thin a line it is. I mean, uh, hopefully he's going to get out of this without any any problems. But boy, you can be rolling along, rolling along, and all of a sudden, a pitch and at bat, and you're not rolling quite the way. You were. First pitch to Ramos. Off speed. Out in front. Ramos struck out looking first time up. He's the Nationals all time leader in home runs as a catcher. 54. He's got one as a designated hitter. In the interleague game. And, uh, this is one of those situations. You got Scherzer, who made one bad pitch at cost, and that gave the Pirates the lead. But he is out there cooking, and you expect him to continue to be good. So you want to make this two nothing lead hold up as long as you possibly can. And now, Savelli wants to go out there, and well, we have a, a moment here. Want to send along best wishes to Pat Kimberling up in Skunk Hollow, one Where? of the suburbs. Yeah, that's one of the suburbs of Catanning. That's under the weather a little bit, and we're hoping that uh, she gets back in the starting lineup as soon as possible from uh, our family up there in the Catanning area to hers and her brother and sister in law down in, in Bradenton, Florida. Larry and Cheryl send their best. So, Pat, I hope you're doing okay. Nothing and one the count to Wilson Ramos and uh, the pitch from Locke. And that is in the center field, a base hit. Espinosa rounding third. And the Nationals on the board, two to one. RBI base hit for Ramos. And we'll do a little first and third action. They want it inside, and he got it inside. He just hit it off the handle. I mean, you can't make a better pitch than that, and you got to tip your cap to Ramos. Uh, was able to just fight it off and get it over the head of Neil Walker. I mean, that's that's a good pitch. You saw where it was off the off the corner. It's not a strike. Just happens sometimes. 
And Harper going first to third and just a couple of things on Harper. He has been on base in 21 straight games now. That's a career high for him. But on the road, he has now been on base in 40 straight road games. The last player over the last decade to do something like that was Albert Pujols back in 2007 when he reached in 42 straight road games. And that's why he's the leader in on base percentage. We're going to find ourselves a ground ball right now, right here. Ian Desmond has hit into the most double plays 13 times. He's grounded into a double play. Nationals team leader in a category you don't want to be leading in. One and oh. Boy, what a start Jeff got off to. 10 straight. He retired. And then with one out. In the fourth, he walked Espinosa and Harper back to back. Almost base hit gets Espinosa home and the time runs at third. And now Jeff falls behind Desmond 2 0. Behind the hitter. He was in danger of loading the bases. Green, green light, yeah. yeah. Green light fouls it off three and one. Well, many times you, you lean toward that decision to give him the green light when a guy's not overpowering. Uh, you know, guys that are overpowering on a 3 0 pitch can throw it right down the middle, and there's so much speed you can't do with it. But Jeff's is not overpowering, so. Figure if you get something you like, it's not going to be 97, 98 miles an hour. Three and two. He's got five strikeouts. Number six. It's be a beautiful spot to record that. 26 pitches this inning, 60 for the game. One out, top of the fourth. Crowd getting revved up for this delivery. And the bases were oh. loaded. Locke wanted that call, did not get it from Scott Bear, the home plate umpire. And now the Nationals have him full. Three walks in the inning for Locke. And a glance over at the Pirate bench because he's probably hearing it. Let's take a look. Well, it was a very good call. Further inside than we thought. Absolutely. So now Jeff's in the jam. Double play still in order, but uh, the plot is thickening. Tyler Moore at the plate, first baseman. Close this one foul for strike one. Among others, Robbie is Mikowski scurrying for cover over there in that foul ball. We're going to have to get him a helmet or a glove. Nothing in one to Tyler Moore. Pulled the string and it's nothing in two. Good location downstairs, didn't give it away. It's the kind of pitches that Jeff uh, was delivering the first three plus innings. First at bat this season with the bases loaded, which is two for 12 in his career with them full. A looper to left center, and that's going to drop in for a hit. Harper scores. Ramos comes in behind him, and the Nationals take the lead three to two. Well, the walks this inning have really hurt Jeff Locke. Two of the three men he's walked so far have scored. Let's take a look at this at bat, pitch by pitch from Jeff in a tough spot. Gets out in front with the curveball and then makes it 0 2 downstairs. 
And then mistake pitch very hittable area pitch he didn't want to make when he was out in front 0 and 2 and it cost him. And then the batter Moore takes second. They're calling that a double. Dan Ugla batting with still one out. Nationals three spot here. They've had some help. Ugla takes a strike. You get a two run lead against Max Scherzer. You hope to keep it, but that's not the case now. The script has flipped over, and now Scherzer will pitch with a lead when he comes back out. Ball and one strike. And you're right, Steve. Things can just turn around so quickly in this game. So quickly after a quick strikeout. And, uh, and it looked like it was going to be just a, a single by Tyler Moore, but the throw came in toward third base and or base running. He took the extra base to get to second, takes the Pirates out of the double play opportunity. Two one. That one's low. Phone call. You just can't let this go on and on and on. You want to let Jeff have every opportunity to work his way out of this. Certainly, the ball game is still very much in the balance. We're still early, still close, but uh, Dale is getting up now. As uh, Ugla pops this one up, shallow center field. McCutcheon and Walker. Walker can't make the play. Another run's going to score. It's four to two, Washington. As Desmond comes in. Base hit for Ugla and a run batted in. Pop up into no man's land. Andrew was not going to get to it. Neil Walker made the attempt over the shoulder. It gets away from him and the beat goes on for the Nationals. It looked like Andrew is playing pretty deep on Ugla, who's hitting about 190. And the runner at third base in that situation doesn't get an opportunity to come in and make a play like that, take away the hit, which is more likely with Ugla than anything else. So McCutcheon earlier electing to throw to third instead of second. Second time this week he's done that, which has allowed a runner to move up. So six Nationals, the last six have reached base. Pitch to Den Decker. One ball and one strike. That is a perfect example of how quickly a gem of a start can get very quickly away from you. Era preparing himself in the bullpen. Now ball to Walker. Goes to four on for one. And that's all they're going to get. Moore safe at third. And then Decker safe at first. Over the force down in the middle. And Decker runs very well. Long throw from Walker back to Foreman. Scherzer swinging a miss. Can't take him for granted. He's nine for 41 now. He can swing the bat, and he knows the value of this at bat for him. Good hitting pitchers are always aware of that. You can really help yourself in this situation. So Jeff needs him badly right now. Foul tip this time, and it's 0-2. 
Jeff Locke a little amped up at 92 miles an hour. Not liking what uh, has been going on here in the top of the fourth. He has thrown 40 of his 74 pitches this inning. And as a pitcher, you never want to have an extended inning like this. Four runs, three hits, three walks. After a pristine three innings. Down to third. John Moe gets the box. All four runs are in for the Nationals. Jeff Lott roughed up in the fourth. Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Just ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! 4-2 to two Nationals. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. That's coming up against Max Scherzer. Celebration of the Pittsburgh Pirates autograph and memorabilia show tomorrow at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. Public appearances by McCutcheon, Walker, Polanco, Marte, Hurdle, along with Dave Parker, and more current and former Pirates. Admission is free for his signing schedule, pricing, and to order autograph tickets. Go to huntauctions.com slash store. Marte bounced out back to Scherzer in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Takes a strike. Scherzer pitching with a lead for the first time. And that makes him very dangerous. Well, this game is really hard to figure sometimes. It is. Jeff Lock is just cruising along. Just on there in the dugout. All of a sudden it unravels. But not to the point where this game is out of hand by any means. Two swings. It's a past the diving Desmond for a base hit. And that's simply hitting the ball hard enough where the shortstop does not have time to get over there and get it. That ball was tattooed. He hits it a little bit softer. It becomes a chance for a spectacular play. Marte's hitting five straight now. We want to see your strongest fan photo now. Use the hashtag. Pit data strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast maybe even tonight. It's brought to you by T-Mobile again the hashtag pit data strong fan Get your photos in want to see them. So time run at the plate. We're taking one right now. Up there. Jung Ho Gong and a little introductory toss over to first base by Max Scherzer. Marte nowhere near off the back. 
Reinhardt's now with four hits off Scherzer. Three starts ago, he got roughed up by the Cincinnati Reds. So it does happen. At home against Cincinnati, four and two thirds innings, five runs given. Jung Ho singled and scored in the second inning. In July, he is second among National League rookies with a 355 average. He's first among National League rookies with a 429 on base percentage. And granted, he's been playing professional baseball for a long time, but not here, so he is considered a rookie. And John Ho bangs one to left field. Our tail stop at second base back to back singles to lead off the bottom of the fourth. And that ball was stung. Two balls extremely well hit by Jung Ho Gung and the Pirates set up shop. Right in that good hitting zone. He goes down, gets the hands in, turns on it, bullet to left. I think Steve as the season moves along just in terms of a personal accolade Jung Ho has to be considered for the rookie of the year one of the favorites anyway at this point I mean his statistics offensively continue to climb and he has he's been on the rise for sure lately now Pedro Alvarez takes ball one his home run was hit an estimated 460 feet bouncing into the river it's the fourth time Pedro has put a ball in the Allegheny River. The third time on a bounce. He has one directly in. That was on the 19th of May this year. And it was a strike. Got fooled on that pitch. Looking for the fastball, didn't get it. Tried to hold up. Yeah, Pedro's home run directly in the river was against the Minnesota Twins. Off of Ricky Nolasco. Two on and nobody out. Chase one. It looked like he was fooled on this ball also. As he got out there and realized halfway during the swing that wasn't what he was looking for. Change up. Two delivery coming from Scherzer. Time was called. Wow. A very late timeout. And Pedro asked for it, got it from home plate umpire Scott Barry, but as late as it could be. Yeah, that's where you're not supposed to get it. And, and the home plate umpire never made a motion to indicate timeout. Max yeah, acknowledging that yeah, wasn't much fun, but it was legal. Ramos setting up outside again. Yeah, after a couple off speed pitches, goes to the fastball there. That's a sequence pitchers love to use. Soft, soft, and then hard fastball. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Alvarez. Three and two. So you know he's he's aware of Pedro's power because this guy can throw the ball 99% of the time exactly where he wants to, but he's been very cautious with Pedro. In fact, uh, he's had a couple of swings that could have been called balls had Pedro not taken a whack at him. Hit that. Payoff pitch. Broke foul. Yeah, certainly no guarantee that he was going to get up in and throw the fastball there. He went off speed. They do a nice job of staying with it. We'll go back to the second inning. It's certainly worth seeing. Over and over. There it goes. One hop. And uh, got good distance into the drink out there. Oh, hitting the sweet spot. Another big pitch coming up after a couple leadoff singles. Payoff. Not yet. 
Well, how important is Pedro to the offense when he has at least one RBI? The Pirates record is 26 and 9. When he's driving them in, they're winning. And he strikes out here. Scherzer got him, reached back, and fired a heavy fastball at 96. That's one thing we'll see from Scherzer. As the game goes along, he'll increase the velocity. That's something he picked up when he was with the Tigers and was a teammate of Justin Verlander, who does the same. Yeah. Well, what these guys do at this level, they keep a little bit of that extra speed in the back pocket so they can call it on it in situations like this. So he did get a little extra. Nice to do that when your regular fastball is 95. Francisco Cervelli takes a strike. Cervelli struck out swinging in the second inning. Cervelli one for 11 against Scherzer. Now Vance Worley warming up. And maybe that indicates that Jeff Locke could be done. Travis Ishikawa has a bat in his hand, and the pitcher spot is two spots away. Ramos takes a real shot. And he is down, and he's going to re require a little attention. So Ramos certainly needs a moment. Matt Williams, the manager, coming out along with the Nationals trainer. Check and see how their catcher's doing. Took it off that, maybe that left shoulder. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe not. Maybe up under the chin area. He's, he's okay. Cervelli he, certainly he, understands. He's, he's, he's not okay, but he's up and ready to go again. It's, yeah, that, that's special fraternity there. Two catchers. Yeah, a couple of countrymen, both from Venezuela. Yep. An umpire that knows what to do to give him enough time to uh, clean the plate or whatever. And uh, now even more time as Ramos about visit with his pitcher. And Marte led the inning off with a base hit. Jung Ho Gun a base hit. He's two for two. Alvarez has struck out. So one out, two on. Uh, tough count for Francisco Cervelli, 0 and 2 against one of the best. Francisco homered last night. Two from Scherzer. In the dirt. And ball and two strikes. First time we saw Max Scherzer, he wasn't a Detroit Tiger. He was an Arizona Diamondback. Mm -hmm. And he really opened up some eyes that night when he pitched against the Pirates. Former, former first rounder. Mm -hmm. It was a rough introduction. He was good. Two. In the air to right. Bryce Harper will make the catch. Two men out. Pedro Florman will come up. Try to get something going. Scherzer has made nine starts now against the Pirates in his previous eight. He's four and two. Earn run average of two and a half. Out of the stretch with two down, facing the switch hitter, Floormont. Ball up high. Well, Scherzer is. To be quite honest, it's right where he wants to be after a couple leadoff singles, two outs, and getting to the Pirate shortstop. The pitch. This one is pulled foul down the first base side. It went fair. And Florimont didn't run. It started off foul and kicked fair before the base, so it is a fair ball. Spun back. And Clint Hurdle will come out and talk. This is not a reviewable play because it happened in front of the base umpire. They cannot challenge this. 
But Clint Hurdle wants to go out and talk to the crew chief Ted Barrett who made the call. Let's take a look down the first baseline. What happened? See it foul. It's got the English on. Could he be arguing that it hit his foot or something? Because it comes back. It comes back over the base. All right, that's a tough break there. That's just a, a weird spin on the baseball. Turns into the third out. The Pirates will end up stranding two men. We will head to the fifth inning at PNC Park. 4-2 Nationals. Trailing the Nationals. Nationals with four runs on three hits. Pedro Flormont thought it was a foul ball. Kick back. Just barely fair. And so he makes the final out and strands two runners after the Pirates had hits from Marte and Gunn to lead off the inning. Neither one of them got off first and second. Well, let's hope the top of the fifth is better than the top of the fourth when the Nationals sent nine men to the plate. Batted around from top to bottom. Start off again with Taylor. Good time up for him. Jeff Locke remains out there. You've got to figure this is his last inning. They had Vance Worley up. One ball and one strike. Blowing in. And this is the kind of situation now. Miserable top of the fourth, and Jeff. Really needs to, to just get down and dirty and grind this out. Give them a, a scoreless fifth inning so he can keep it where it is. Right, and four on for the out. One down. Okay, that's all right. Doesn't matter how. Well, there's Rick Rose, Rick. Happy birthday, Maul. Who's the guy who uh, slows it down for you with the Allegheny Super Mall? Super Mall. That Super Mall must be a very cold camera. He's got a hoodie on. Maybe that was a birthday gift today. I don't know, but happy birthday. A chilly over there. This night in the mid 80s. Good to see these guys every night in the press room. Good as good as anybody. We've got some great cameramen here. I mean, Ricky, Ricky gets great, great shots with that Super Bowl, doesn't he? Looking over your shoulder, Maul. Well, it's good to have somebody looking over your shoulder. <laughs> got you in the palm of our hands. There's the one one to Espinosa. And for a strike one and two.
is our other super mode. Right there, Chad's operating that tonight. Just inside the foul line. Broken bat liner right to John Hole. Two down. All right. We got to figure it out now. Line drives at people. Adam Ball. There's Chad's camera right there. Down the right field line. Catching the ball field and this magnificent crowd coming out on a Friday night. Uh, Bryce Harper with an 0 1 count on him. Mm. That's a filled up PNC Park. Summer evening. Harper trying to punt against the shift. You know, Harper was invited to take part in the home run derby and declined because uh, his pitcher is his dad. His dad's throwing him more batting practice than anybody and has helped to make him the hitter he is. But his dad had shoulder surgery. And couldn't pitch, and Bryce really wanted to share that experience with his dad, so he declined for this year. He's waiting until his dad gets healthy again. And to right center field, that's a base hit. Harper's going to try for two. Here's the throw, and he is safe. And Bryce Harper just took advantage of Andrew McCutcheon there. This little drop shot in the short right center field. Right out of the batter's box, he was sprinting. Andrew McCutcheon and Gregory Polanco converging and Kutch. Grabbing it and throwing it, but Harper with his 22nd double. Ramos. Oh, what a play by Walker. A stab by Walker. Wilson Ramos stung it. And Walker grabs it. Three line drives. One to short, one to third, and this one to second. Saved a run. Kept it there.
Jeff Decker to pinch hit for Jeff Locke. Follows the first pitch away off of Max Scherzer. Jeff Decker, 167 this season, hit his first major league triple over the weekend on Sunday in Milwaukee. And he takes a strike here. So Jeff is done for the evening. He goes five, gives up four earned runs. Strikes out five and walks three. And Vance Worley preparing to come in. In the dirt. And it's one and two to Decker. Decker, former Padre. It's outside and it's two and two. Made two starts for the Pirates since being called up. Started on Wednesday in left field against Kansas City. Be called a week ago tonight from Indianapolis. Worked the full count. Just missing that outside corner. Good take by Jeff. And the 3 2 pitch. Becker fouls it off. Got a piece of it. Polanco on deck. Three two delivery. Drop the foul. Decker hanging in there. Jeff at 275 in Triple A. 54 games with the Indianapolis Indians. Seven strikeouts for. Scherzer so far. Home half of the fifth, the PNC Park Pirates down a pair of runs. They're packed in on the rotunda tonight. Another sellout crowd. Ball four. And Max Scherzer has walked a man, stopped the presses. Yeah. This doesn't happen very often. This is the first time in his last seven starts he's walked a batter. And, and this kind of thing bothers that kind of pitcher as much as anything because they take such pride in throwing strikes and not walking people. And many times you'll see them, and they won't admit it, throw a fat pitch just to put the ball in place just so they're not uh, walking somebody. That happens. The Pirates get another leadoff man on the base pass. They did it last inning. Garrett Cole looking on. It's just the 16th walk of the season for Scherzer. And this is 20th start. That'll give you a proportion. 165 strikeouts to 16 walks. How's that for a strikeouts to walks ratio? Pretty good ratio. That's about as good as they come. Polanco's struck out twice, once looking, once swinging. Scherzer throws to first base. Decker back easily. And Max doesn't waste any velocity on some of these tosses over to first base. Just to let you know, he's aware of it. Pirates with five hits. Nationals with four, but Washington up by two on the scoreboard. Gregory takes strike two. Why not watch one of the best? Uh, you know, they're right handers, they're power guys. I'm sure he watches them the way he throws strikes and the pitch selections in various scenarios. Absolutely. I think uh, Garrett Cole wants to be as good as he can possibly be and is aware that he can study every aspect of a particular pitcher that he wants to pay attention to. And if you're going to do that, Take a look at this guy here. I think he recognizes the intensity Scherzer has because he has the same thing. One and two. And, and I think a guy like Cole will watch a guy like Scherzer to see how he reacts to adversity because I, I know Garrett will admit that emotionally he'll let things get away every once in a while in spite of himself. I mean, he's still brand new on this thing. 
but Scherzer is intact. Another one two. Count is even two and two. Scherzer did have a walk, one walk in his last start. So over his last seven starts, he's had two walks. He did walk a Dodger last time out. But still, two walks over seven starts. And he's working on another one here as the count has been filled up. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Well, Let's go, Bucks. Talk about intense pirate fans. Beautiful night at the ballpark. Lovely. Here comes the 3 2 to Gregory. And pounds it foul out of play. Force him to throw another one. Working him. Away, 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 away. There's <laughs> Way outside. They want another one out there. Throw to first, and Decker dives. See, there's there's the Scherzer move. So, uh, <laughs> loads you to sleep. Okay, I'm not going to give you anything uh, of any uh, speed over there. I'm just going to lob a couple over. Then, when he thinks that he's done enough of that to maybe lull you to sleep, get careless, you get that bullet. Keep working. Keep working. It may seem like he can throw strikes forever, but tough to do when you're in a 3 2 situation. Game still on the line. You got a dangerous power guy up there. And you stay away from that, obviously, with that spray chart you saw in the deliveries. Keep it going. Keep working. Big time at bat for Gregory. Scherzer having his pitch count elevated by Polanco. Next pitch will be the 80th of the game for him. Scherzer against Polanco. Nobody out. Decker aboard after a leadoff walk. With you, please, Rojas out in the bullpen. I keep thinking there's a very important pitch coming, and they are, but nothing's decided yet. Again, keep, it working. Uh, keep working them. Well, you know, Polanco knows that chances are much better that he's going to see a strike than a ball. He's seen a lot of fastballs now. That, that delivery's 96 miles an hour. You wonder if Chosu is going to go with something real slow at some point, try to get him out in front. What a battle. What a battle. And if Gregory can win this one, this is this is big time. The 11th pitch of the at bat. Yep. Keep working. Straighten that one out a little bit more. This is becoming a vendetta. <laughs> And uh, when you think about it, there's a lot riding on these full count deliveries. This one's hit well. Way back. And gone! A home run, Gregory Polanco! And it ties the game at four. What an at bat! Maybe the at bat of the season. What an at bat for number 25. And this crowd is loving it. And they're loving their Gregory right now. 
That's big time stuff right there. That is big time stuff. 12 pitch at bat. That might be the best at bat of his career so far. The way that he worked, one of the best pitchers in baseball. And then hammers one out of here for his fourth home run of the year. But the Buckos playing a little long ball so far this weekend. Breaking ball. Still out of way, and Max Scherzer knows it. He doesn't have to look. Bryce Harper went back, took a look, but Scherzer knew it. He didn't have to look. Scherzer threw five straight fastballs and then switched it up to the curveball, and Polanco did not miss. And Walker hits this one well. Scherzer tonight. That's six home runs in the series by the Pirates so far. But we're not yet halfway through. A strike to McCutcheon on the breaking ball. One ball, one strike. A 12 pitch at bat. And then a quick at bat. This is a majestic look. Deep part of the ballpark, and the ballpark just simply does not hold it. Down onto the grass, Gregory Polanco has done his work, he's enjoying it. Two now. Punch has worked an even count. Well, there's another guy that the Pirates hope heats up. Walker with his eighth home run. This will be pitch number 28 delivered by Max Scherzer in the bottom of the fifth inning. You're hearing a Scherzer chant from this crowd, remembering the no hitter. They'll remember tonight, too. Cutchin down to third. Espinoza fires across to get him. And that was the first out of the inning. So at least 30 pit, well, 30 plus pitches going to be delivered by Max Scherzer as the bullpen has been activated for the Nationals. Now the Pirates have had back to back home runs already once this month. It was July 1st. Guy at the plate, Starling Marte, went back to back with Pedro Alvarez at Detroit. Polanco and Walker this inning going back to back. Pirates back in front now, five to four. And Marte hits one high and deep, but foul. He had the distance. But it's a long strike, nothing in one. Let's not forget the free pass that Jeff Decker. Worked against one of the best control pitchers in all of baseball to start this inning off at the bottom of the batting order, pinch hitting for Locke. 
by the way, this offense still keeps Jeff Locke in line for a win if they could run the table here one way or the other and keep this lead. Yeah, Locke qualifies going five innings, so that three pass by Decker important. And a strikeout. And certainly nothing determined once again, but the Pirates give up the lead and then retake the lead. Explosive. You know, we had fireworks last night during the game, after the game, and more tonight. Wayne Park University tweets scrolling across the bottom of your screen in reaction to the inning. Jung Ho Gong you know, takes the ball inside. We talked so many times about at times the pitching is going to have to carry you, at times the bats are going to have to carry you. Last two nights we're liking the bats. Six home runs so far. In the game and a half of this weekend series. That pitch right there, the 35th of the inning. Well, Jeff Locke knows how that feels. Neil Walker just losing that ball deep right center field. And oh, wow! Highway robbery. Danny Espinosa climbing the ladder. To steal a hit from John Hogan, but the Pirates get to Scherzer in the fifth after he walks Decker. Gregory Polanco hammers this one for his fourth of the year, and then Walker, a solo shot for home run number eight, and the Pirates back in front. It's baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Trax and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. This day in Pirates history brought to you by Day Automotive, July 24th, 2013. Francisco Liriano and Steven Strasburg squared off in a pitcher's duel. Liriano pitched eight scoreless innings while Strasburg allowed a run. In eight innings, a Pedro Alvarez second inning homer. The Pirates would score three in the ninth to win four to two at Nationals Park. Leading five to four, Vance Worley takes over for Jeff Locke, Gregory Polanco, and Neil Walker with back to back home runs in the fifth. Went from a pitcher's duel to a slugfest. And Steve McCanny, pitching coach, talking to Max Scherzer. Those are obviously in a different state of mind than he was on the 20th of July, the last time he faced the Pirates. Certainly not to take anything away from that performance. That was awesome. But yeah. Vance Worley now on the hill. Yep. Appearance number 20. And Desmond hits one deep to left center. Going back, but catch it. This ball is gone. A home run. 
career home run number 101 for Ian Desmond and the game is now tied. First batter Worley faces Ian Desmond knocks the game up. He just buried one in the right field stands almost got it out of here last night. He goes downstairs. This is a good pitch. Look at the look at the location down and in just got under it. And a lot of lift. This ball jumped off the bat last night. That home run he hit. This, this is a pitch that should not be hit over the wall. Well, maybe it's going to be that kind of night. Tyler Moore, the batter. Well, Max back in the game. Gets him off the hook for now. And now it'll be a no decision for Jeff Locke. Game in the hands of the Pirate bullpen as far as the decision goes. Tyler Moore. With a two run hit in the fourth inning. Grounds this one to short. Floorball. One out. Yeah, dig your heels in. This has got a chance to be one of those kind of games. Uh, they're entertaining, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. One of these teams to get the 27th out over the shoulder. A lot of these fans enjoying this game. There's going to be a big number announced again tonight, including Ron and Barbara George, who are here with their family, extended family, celebrating their 50th anniversary. They're seeing a good one. Congratulations to Ron and Barbara George. Number 50. Dan Ugler with a 1 0 count on him. Two and zero. Well, Vance was greeted very rudely by Ian Desmond. Put it in the Nationals' bullpen to tie the game. After the Pirates battled back with three runs in the fifth, to take a 5-4 lead. Fastball down and in to even the count. Vance had to make a spot start over the weekend. Saturday in Milwaukee. Minutes before the start of the game, Francisco Liriano came up with tightness in his neck, couldn't make the start. Worley had to go. And uh, obviously, after seeing Liriano pitch the way he did last night, his neck's feeling just fine now. Desmond with a tying home run. Off of Worley. Top of the sixth. Ugly down on strikes. And do. Two men out for the Nationals in the sixth inning. Sunday, Pirates taking on the Nats. 135 in the finale of this four game series. All kids 14 and under receive a Francisco Liriano and Neil Walker Cup thanks to Tops. Get to the ballpark early and let the kids explore the number one Cochran family fun zone on Federal Street. Kids get to run the bases afterwards, courtesy of the original pizza logs. For tickets, go to pirates.com. Don't forget this Sunday, as we mentioned, 135 game, but one of the Sunday games coming up has a game time change, Steve. August 9th against the Dodgers and has been picked up for the national telecast on Sunday night. National folks are starting to like the Bucks. Yeah. So they are going to uh, televise that one on August 9th against the Dodgers. So it'll be another 805 start. Remember the last one against the Cardinals. Uh, how good a game that was and how electric the crowd was. How about this? This kind of interesting thing. Guy in the on deck circle, Clint Robinson, wasn't he scratched? He was. Out of the starting lineup as they get down toward the bottom of the batting order. Activity continues in the Nationals bullpen. Well, they said he was ill. Two balls, two strikes. Tomorrow night, Gio Gonzalez, the left hander at seven and four, will oppose Pirates right hander A.J. Burnett in the third game of this series. Eight and three. And 
Down on strikes goes Matt Van Decker. Ian Desmond ties it up at five with a home run. Changes to tell you about as Tyler Moore moves out to play left field. Clint Robinson, who was slated to start at first base, uh, feeling better obviously. He's out at first base right now. And a new pitcher on as the uh, night ended for Max Scherzer. He'll end up with a no decision. So Sammy Solis making his ninth appearance. He's been up and down out of the uh, Washington Nationals minor league system. Appearance number nine. His first major league win under his belt. Facing Alvarez. Pedro takes a strike. So Scherzer goes five innings, five runs earned on seven hits, one walk, eight strikeouts. Victimized by the long ball. All game in the hands of the respected bullpens. Pedro with one of the three home runs tonight. Same for Neil Walker, Gregory Polanco, the other. Last time the Pirates had at least three homers in back to back games. Last day of April of 2013 and the first day of May at Milwaukee. So that hasn't been done in more than two years. One and two to Alvarez. Plenty of speed for Solis at 95. Plenty out. of breaking ball. A lot of movement on that pitch. Right along the red carpet with your Pirates All Stars on a special Inside Pirates Baseball. Go behind the scenes with Garrett Cole, AJ Burnett, Andrew McCutcheon, and Mark Melanson in Cincinnati as they partake in this year's All Star festivities on Inside Pirates Baseball. Kings of Queen City. It's tonight at the post game on Root Sports. Cervelli's 0 for 2. Ball 1, 2, Cervelli. Well, this doesn't happen too much to Mac no. Scherzer, so it's notable. Last team with back to back home runs, 2011. Three home runs back to 2011. It just doesn't happen to him very often. Ball one strike to Cervelli. This is Sammy Solis. We 
Calling from double A on the 17th. This is the third time he's been with a big club. He's the highest rated left hander that the Nationals have in their system in terms of prospects. He falls behind Cervelli, three and one. Everybody keeps bringing out bullpen people that throw 95 miles an hour. Backed off there, breaking ball. Just keep firing them out. Mike Rizzo, the general manager of the Nationals in attendance during the series. You know he's busy. He's busy trying to get a lot of his players healthy and they're busy on the telephone like every other general manager in Major League Baseball. He has put together quite a baseball team. But the injury is uh, the X factor for everybody. So really took this foul ball right off the toe. Tenziano, one of the trainers for the Pirates, out with Clint Hurdle to visit and check on Francisco Cervelli. Cervelli had to leave a game in Kansas City Monday night. Problem with his wrist, and Stewart had to replace him to catch the remainder of the series. Chris Stewart always at the ready. Well, that'll make him forget about the sore toe for about 90 feet. Here it is, right back and barking again. Well, go ahead, run on base in the bottom of the sixth inning for the Buckos. Inside out to right field. Slice and dice the opposite way. Lormon turns around about right handed against the lefty Solis. Fouls this one off. Jared Hughes getting activated in the bullpen. Every time I look at those kind of hits and say slice and dice, I think the old Vegematic. Does it make Julian fries too? Yes, it does. And I still got one. Oh, Vegematic. Didn't happen to buy that late at night. Very off late. Off the very, TV. Very late it? night. I had. One time I had four of them. <laughs> Where are the other three? They went with the sale of the house. I don't know. I I I, I kept one. You threw that into the yeah to the deal. Yeah. But wait, there's more. I said, you want to buy this house? Yeah, we'll throw in the couch and three vegematics. Swing and a miss by Florimo. And it's one and two. Right Morrell in the on deck circle. He would hit for Worley. Strikes out. Second strikeout for Solis. Cervelli at first base and two men out. Foul ball off his big right toe, and then the next pitch laid it into right field. Morell swinging a miss. He had a hit last night. Started at third base. Francisco trying to get the numbness out of that foot, probably. A good shot on that right foot. 
about that home run he hit last night? Up past the letter R in Pirates. In the uh, bushes in center field. Way up there. Over the shrubbery. Almost to the batter's eye. There's not much room past the shrubbery and then the start of that eye either. No. I mean, we, we've seen so far this week in this series some balls really launched. Neil Walker's 456 feet the estimated distance. Pedro's 460. Back in the second inning. And Morrell hits this one pretty well to right center. It is going. It is off the wall. Cervelli around third. He's coming to the plate. And Brent Morrell with a two out run scoring double gives the Pirates back the lead at six to five. And they got the perfect bounce. It didn't bounce up into the stands. It short hopped and went straight up in the air. That gave the Pirates the opportunity to come all the way around from first base. If it bounced over the fence, Cervelli's still at third base. A slicing, high slicing ball that kept running away from Taylor. Just kept running away and running away. Here's how it starts. Really taking off, and because they got the bounce that was close enough to the wall to go straight up in the air, there, there, there makes a difference. That makes it a lot easier for Francisco to come all the way around. First double this year for Morel, and it comes at a big time. A couple of pinch hitters that come through Decker, that leadoff walk shouldn't be ignored, and this. Big lead double. A lot more base hit. Morrell being waved around third. He will score. Three on the eyes for Gregory Polanco. It's seven to five. Have yourself a good night, young man. His last at bat took 12 pitches before he went yard. This one just one. Hit it straight away. Right back up through the middle. Two outs, nothing to wait around for for Morrell. And now that will be it for Solis as the Pirates grab. I'm thinking that might be all for him, but apparently, I'm sorry, my caddy's up there. Yep, not Matt Williams. No, no mistake there. Well, one thing that's really good to see as uh, Barrett warms up is that Polanco got that big hit off a left-hander, and Glenn Hurdle and the rest of the Pirates staff really want to see him develop more against left-handed pitching. Because what's going to make a, a, a good player really good, especially a left-handed hitter, is if he can hit lefties. Big night for Gregory and McCaddy out there buying some time. So that gets Vance Worley off the hook. Brent Morrell, his first career pinch hit RBI. It was his 26th career major league double. First double of the season. And they're going to appeal at third base to see whether Morrell touched the bag on his way around. And Third base umpire Gabe Morales says he did. Well, these runs belong to Vance Worley. Vance had given up the tying home run. Now he finds himself in a much better position in terms of the decision. He made a good pitch too, as you said it, Steve. He made a really good pitch to really? Desmond. And, and I don't know how Desmond went down there and got it and hit it where he did. I mean, even if he hit it, it's hard to get underneath it. Fastball was trying to run down and in. One out to Walker. Way out in front. Strike. So here's Morell coming around third base. This is what the Nationals were appealing. You can see right there, he's right on the back. Gabe Morell 
Let's call him safe. Whoa. Almost threw a, a real good cutter over there to first base. It still might be rolling. Robinson. Love save. Throw back more accurate there. You got to wonder here with two outs if Polanco has his eyes on heading to second base against the left hander Solis. Two run lead in the sixth. There he goes. And Walker fouls at that. Look from this Decent angle jump. like he guessed right. Yeah. Good jump. A lot of guesswork when you're trying to steal off a lefty. Guess right, it's easy. Guess wrong, it's easy. You get thrown out. Medium, medium jump. But with his speed. And Walker hits this one up in the air to left field. Tyler Moore getting under it. He'll make the catch. Another good inning for the Pirates. Three hits, two runs, and we're rocking on a Friday night at PNC Park. Pirates in front, 7-5. of the game brought to you by T-Mobile. Abby sends us this one celebrating the Pirates offense and seven runs on the board again tonight back to back night so far. Abby right behind Pirates dugout. Good seats. Oh he, he watched a couple from that angle that were launched right in front of him into the river Pedro. I don't know. Did we ever determine whether Walker's ball finally got wet? I, I knew it was heading that way. It bounced. Well, it was on the river walk. Gregory Polanco on right field. Three RBIs tonight. Two run homer and an RBI base hit. Pirates come up with back to back two out hits against Sammy Solis. Get the lead back. Clint Robinson, the batter, he swings, hits it toward the middle, and it's dropped by Florman. He tried to get ball that rid of that ball before he had it. Robinson, who came in as part of a double switch last inning, batting ninth, but first this inning through the wicket, past Hughes, and then that ball was hit sharply enough. I think he's going to have plenty of time. Just never got a handle. Looked like he was looking toward first. 
didn't grab the ball. Error on Florimon. Sean Rodriguez has taken over defensively at first base for the Pirates. We've seen this a lot during the course of the season where Sean will come in as a defensive replacement late. But he was his numbers, he's been very, very good lately. And there's a ground ball to Florimon. Walker got one. Safe at first. Florman had to go a bit to his right, and that play took a little longer to develop. Robinson forced out at second base. Yeah, that, uh, that costs you some some distance, some time, and then creates a longer throw. Ball was not absolutely crushed. The Pirates did, I think, all they could. The, the speed beat them. Ted Barrett right on it. Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl gives us the slow look. And Espinosa batting with one out and a man at first base. Keep doing it, Jared. Keep throwing those ground balls. That's what you do. Gunner takes off. Swing and a miss. No throw. And that'll be a stolen base for Taylor, his 10th of the year. Well, that takes the double play out of order. He took that decent size lead and got a good jump on Jarrett. Sometimes you're just really concentrating so much on the batter, you forget about the responsibility of first base. They may have had a hit and run on. He, he, yeah, the runner took the look back in. I think that was the case last inning with Polanco. He took a look back too, and Walker swung and fouled it back. So instead of a straight steal for Polanco, they had the hit and run going. Taylor in scoring position, one out. His run doesn't beat you for sure. We all know that, but you'd love to contain it. Not let it happen. Oh and two. That is a fair ball. Cervelli will fire down to first to Rodriguez to get him. Advancing to third is Taylor. There are two men out for the Nationals. What do you do with Bryce Harper? Chopped out in front. Textbook stuff by Cervelli to get the out at first base. Make sure you get the grip. That's the first thing. You've got the angle already created. That helps on the throw. You're not throwing down the backside of the runner. That's what happens when you slide hard. You need a new pair of pants. Now we're going to talk this uh, Harper situation over. Now Bryce Harper can certainly be a challenge. Jared Hughes wants to get a ground ball off of Harper. This Tim, uh, sometimes you look at the uh, jeans that are all ripped and tattered. And that's the stylish thing. I don't think that's the case over at third base. Uh, for Michael Taylor. Well, I'll tell you, that used to be one of the things that uh, you used to do on purpose when you're hitting 210. Slide, get the uniform as dirty as you can. Gives a perception that you're really working hard. There used to be a list of things you should do when you're hitting 210 to look good. That was one of them. I'm not saying at, that's the case here. He's, I see Taylor looking at his knee. He's probably got a pretty good scrape on there he's looking at. Your pants open up like that on your knee. You've pretty much opened up your skin too. All right, here you go, Hughes against Harper. Well, we said one of our tips to win from Rivers Casino that uh, you don't want Harper to beat. You want to control Harper. 1-0 pitch. Played again. So careful with them on the first two pitches. Could be one of those uh, initial approaches to unintentional, intentional walk. 
an intentional intentional walk. Moving way out way outside. Yeah they are pitching around Bryce Harper and. It looks like the Pirates are willing to put the tying run on. With Ramos coming up next. And the unintentional intentional walk to Bryce Harper. Speaking of walks, today happens to be Barry Bonds' 51st birthday. I saw a note about Barry today. Major League record 2,558 walks. 668 of those were intentional. Incredible. And Bonds was walked more times than Henry Aaron and Albert Pujols currently combined. Pujols has walked 1,145 times. Aaron walked 1,402 times. In case you're interested, Babe Ruth walked 2,062 times. First and third, two down. I did my part with Henry. The other guys. Have How many of those did you give him? My share. <laughs> I know you, you gave him a home run or two. How many? How many? But yeah, I'm in, I'm in his book. He's in my book. We're in each other's books. Pitchers remember things about the great hitters. I gave up, I think, five to them in wow. ten years. Swing and a miss. Strike one to Ramos. I hope nobody does any research on that. That's kind of a guess. <laughs> That's still good, though. but That's I know very good. If, if, if it's the truth, sure. <laughs> it's like what you said about your book. Great stories. Some of them are even true. Killing me. You're killing me on my book sales now. No, no, no. They're <laughs> worth reading. Absolutely. Every story. <laughs> Nothing in two to Ramos. Nothing safe about this lead, but you love where Jared Hughes is now. Now he's a sinker ball pitcher, so uh, heads up behind the plate for Cervelli. He's going to try to stay downtown. I would or downstairs, I would think. On inside and low, and it's one and two. They are waiting for a strikeout of some sort. They're wants, talking a lot of baseball. Yeah, right they, they want this out. They really want this out. One two fouled off. Almost got. Oh, yeah, that close. That close to getting them. What are we going to throw him now? Can we try another sinker? What if one of those kids say, yeah, Go upstairs now. You've shown him everything downstairs. <laughs> what if we got, well, what if we saw a high fastball? <laughs> I doubt if we're going to have that happen. There's the pick. There's the pick. That is critical because if he doesn't get that ball, it's seven to six. And Harper on second base. Really great pick by Francisco. Worth another look. That ball almost get, looked like it might have hit on the home plate itself. And that's just like accelerating that does that. Okay, guys. Bring it home. 2-2. Two, two. Got it! Strike three! <laughs> just what he wanted. Yep. They called it. Stretch time at PNC Park. Hughes strands two. The Pirates with a seven to five lead.
Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl providing us with some outstanding shots tonight to tell part of the story. The 7-5 Pirate lead, bottom of the seventh with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Nevert. Robbie Insmikowski with us as well. And Andrew McCutcheon leading off against the new pitcher, right-hander Aaron Barrett. Hard throwing right. Twenty-four innings, thirty-two strikeouts. Yeah, that's hard thrown. Just six walks. They keep bringing him out of these bullpens, these power arms. Cuts without a hit tonight, 0 for 3. He's got a 1 1 count on him. Facing Aaron Barrett, he's an old Miss Rebel. Ninth round pick in 2010 by the Nationals. Tell you, you're getting responses on certain situations here tonight, like you might get in September when everything is on the line. I mean, that strikeout by Hughes in the seventh inning to close out that half inning. I mean, that was that was a, some emotion involved. Some, I mean, some real response. Yeah, Jared continues to get it done. <laughs> Last night, in, uh, stranding an inherited runner. You realize that Pirates relievers, Steve, over the last 31 home games have not allowed an inherited runner to score. He didn't inherit any tonight, but at the same time, Hughes, when he comes out with men on, doesn't let anybody in. And I bet those two young men we just saw are fully aware of that. They were grinding that at bat out really too. Those two guys right there, if we could, yeah, they got it done. There, I used to tell us straight once this month. That's great. Good stuff. So McCutcheon with a 3 2 count. I would look for heat, Andrew. And ground ball left side. That's through for a hit. And he went away from heat, paid the price. And McCutcheon is hitting three straight games. He went away from the strength of fastball like a cutter and a good one. Andrew just turned it back around, found the hole. Well, we are getting to that uh, that time where the campaigns begin. I don't know if he's announced his candidacy yet, but folks certainly think highly enough of him. We're the one of his president. I know you and you and Greg ran one time, didn't you? We did. Yep. I saw the T-shirt, so I know you're in. We did. Yep. Yep. All four of those T-shirts. <laughs> Great response. Marte has a single in the fourth. He's grounded out and struck out. The Pirates are a good fastball hitting team. They have shown that time and time again. Sometimes they struggle with the off speed stuff, but McCutcheon did not. These days, single for him. These days, everybody struggles with the breaking balls. Well, you keep talking about the power arms. I mean, you've got guys who throw 95 regularly, 96, 97, even 100. Yep. And then when they pull the string on a breaking ball, it, it's just got to. Be devastating sometimes for a hitter. Oh yeah, and you right. can't do anything when you're out in your front foot. Yeah, well, and on the other side of the coin, when you go away from your best pitch, which is 97 mile an hour fastball that Barrett has, goes to the breaking ball, you get hurt, and said, "Why didn't I stay with my best stuff?" It's, it's an ongoing thing. Marte with a chase there, and that was the uh, cutter. It looked like. Tony Watson. Starting to get warm in the Pirates pen. Aaron Hughes getting the job done in the top of the seventh inning. Now the Pirates batting in the home half. Runner on, nobody out. In the air to center field. Back goes Taylor. Still going back. And he makes the catch on the track. And that's an example of these center fielders who have so much confidence in their ability to go back on the ball. It went a long way to run that one down, but uh, 
Again, they feel like they can do that on a regular basis. Well, that's a good play. That ball had a lot of carry on it. Good looking pitch. There have been some good pitches hit a long way tonight. A little breaking ball. He squared it up. And Taylor ran it down. Marte one for four. Trying to reenact that at bat. Can't do a much better job with that kind of a quality pitch than he did. Jung Ho Gun with six straight multi hit games. Two he, has, he should be three for three. It's an outstanding catch at third base on a line shot. He's had three really good at bats. Randy Espinosa with that grab as he had to use every bit of the springs in his legs to get up and get it. Well, Cutching off a of first one out. Ball toward the middle. There's one. And that is a double play. No runs ahead, and that is it. We go to the eighth inning at PNC Park. Pirates seven, the Nationals five. Two hits tonight, but last time up didn't work out for him with one out McCutcheon at first base. This is our Chick fil A double play tonight. Desmond to Ugla to Robinson. And the Nationals end up getting out of the inning. See uh, Ugla footwork around the bag on the twin kill. Throw a little low, but good backhanded pick by Robinson. And here is Ian Desmond to lead off. Against Tony Watson. Mark's trying to go to their eighth and ninth inning program. Appearance number 45. Way, uh, Tony will be honored on August 18th, the Pirate uh, Heart and Hustle Award winner, sponsored by Major League Alumni. Josh Harrison got that last year. Yep, Tony, very much deserving of that award. Looking forward to it. get a chance to hand it to him on August 18th. Oh, that's going to be I'm nice. Looking forward to that. One and one to Desmond. Ball and two strikes. And made his 300th major league appearance Monday night in Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. He pitched a scoreless eighth inning, striking out one. Tony out of the University of Nebraska. He had a lot of uh, friends and family in Kansas City. I see him pitch. They don't get an opportunity that often to 
be within driving distance of where he's pitching. So be entertained. Some folks throughout those days during batting practice. I bet he picked up the tab too. Two two strike three call. Got him. Been Mr. Reliable most of the time that we've seen him out on the mound in the eighth inning. Well, Tony's recorded at least one strikeout and has issued only one walk in his last 11 games plus tonight. That's 16 strikeouts during that time over his last 11 plus games. Not too many guys tougher than Tony Watson in the eighth inning. Desmond can attest to. Tony was getting All Star consideration. He certainly pushed well enough to be named an All Star again, but a little bit short this year in terms of uh, the necessary support a pitcher needs to make the All Star team. Nothing in two to Tyler Moore. One out for the Nationals in the top of the eighth. This one is hit high and shallow. Marte. Two outs. Follow the Pirates wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. And maybe we should also get a hat like that. That's, that's a special. That's a special hat. I think you need one of those to go along with your uh, orange Elmer Fudd hat that you break out when it's cold. Yeah, it's pretty you know, I wear a lot of hats. You know, like a lot of people. <laughs> oh, Robbie with a catch. Oh, look who he gave it to. Those are our two friends. How to win friends and influence people. That's yeah. right. That, those are the two guys. Our guys that, that got uh, the big strikeout by Hughes. All right, way to go, Rob. They were calling the pitchers over there earlier. Now they get a foul ball. And ugly. Swinging and miss. Let's see the. Uh, the handiwork of Robbie Insmikowski here. Look at how he he glides over sharply to his left with a pen in his mouth. Yeah, and takes it away from a very deserving fan. Doesn't break stride, but then immediately gets the turns. He gets the redeemer here. Tremendous technique. Yeah. Ugla to left field and Marte on the run will make the grab. Tony Watson, a clean eighth inning. Pirates coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth.
play like fire and a Friday night rocks on Root Sports. On with the eighth, Sean Rodriguez, first plate appearance. He'll face a new pitcher. Casey Jansen, what a great baseball name, huh? Yeah. Seven five, Buckos in front. Double digit hits again tonight for the Pirates. Jansen, an eight year veteran. Pretty good command for the right hander, although didn't have what he wanted on that pitch, so he stopped. Numbers a strike thrower. Just two free passes in those 19 innings. Starts things off with that split finger grip. And it'll change once he gets into the club. Charlie Morton does that. Number of pitchers will use the grip of their their best pitch to start and then change once the ball's in the glove and there's a strike to Sean. Sometimes they'll just use a particular grip because it's easier to change from that grip to another grip rather than start with one that creates a little discomfort or tough to get to. Sean stays alive. It was tougher for me to go from a fastball grip in the glove during the windup from a fastball to a curve grip so I started with a curve because I could easily slide over to the fastball. It all gets down to individual comfort, ease. What you get to look forward to. Rodriguez down on strikes. Let's take a look now at our Nissan Road Ahead. Still two more games remaining in this series. Tomorrow, starting at 6:30 here on Root Sports, left-hander Gio Gonzalez at 7:04 will oppose Pirates right-hander AJ Burnett, who's 8-3. Then Sunday afternoon, one o'clock airtime. Rookie Joe Ross, two and two, will oppose Garrett Cole. Saw Joe Ross, uh, very impressive uh, in Washington on that trip. Yeah, he was good. He was good. National swept the Pirates when Steve was in attendance. Thanks. Yeah. I'm just saying, you well, happened to be there. Yeah, I'm not allowed back. Wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. Just saying that you happened to be there. Anyway, the. Uh, you know the, the, the perception things you get through more outs and you win this ball game you've guaranteed yourself at least a split you come to the ballpark tomorrow feeling pretty good about your chances to have a real good weekend. So uh, look forward to that happening in the ninth but it's not certainly guaranteed. Well, you also come to the ballpark knowing that over the next two nights you get two or two games rather you have two all stars pitching <laughs> including one of them That's with it. the most wins in Major League Baseball and Cole. Joe Ross here. Cervelli up in the air right. And this one is off the wall. And Francisco into second base with a one out double. Use the Clemente wall, the short porch and right. Not just the lefties that can use it. Francisco bangs it off the wall. Bryce Harper right there to take care of that bounce, but then looks like he had a little trouble getting a handle on the ball. So easy two bases for Francisco. As he hits the high fly ball to medium right field. Medium right field is enough many times. See Harper going back. Positions for the bounce. Gets it. Drops it. Francisco Cervelli recovering from that sore toe very nicely. Just two hits. Two, bats. Yeah, two hits since that foul ball. Off the bang toe. everybody else in that dugout on the toe. Joe Florimont takes low. Earlier in the game, up on an inning or so ago, we started talking about the Pirates being a good fastball hitting team. They rank sixth in Major League Baseball against the fastball with an average velocity of 93 miles an hour plus 280 the team average against the fastball 93 plus. Florimont to the right side. That'll get Cervelli to third. Two out. Against the off speed stuff. 19th in baseball with a 224 average. And 10th against breaking pitches, 222. Travis Ishikawa going to bat here in the ninth spot, and we have got very good work from the pinch hitters. Decker with a walk, and he came around to score. Brent Morell, RBI double, he came around to score. Great work off the bench tonight. 
Cervelli third base two outs. Inside the pitch from Jansen. Want to know to Ishikawa. Ishikawa had a pretty good game Monday, didn't he? Kansas City. Yes, he did. Two doubles. There's two of the uh, people off the bench were mentioning. Both contributors, Jeff Decker and Brent Morell. Morell with his first career pinch hit RBI. His first double of the season. They mentioned uh, also Pirates would feel good with a win tonight, taking the first two coming in for game three. And don't forget, tomorrow night there'll be another third baseman in the lineup. That's right. Aramis Ramirez will be here tomorrow and is expected to start at third base. Homecoming night at the ballpark. So many years ago as a 19 year old. The big leagues of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Ramos Ramirez. He's back. He will be there. He'll be somewhere in the middle of the order. You figure fourth, fifth, sixth, somewhere there, That's maybe where he's been most of his career. Yeah. A strike to Ishikawa. Drop that 73 mile an hour hook in there. Casey Jansen. Let's see. There's a. Jansen pitched for the Giants, and there was a Casey that played for the Mudville Nine. There's also a Casey from the South Hills who Sean Casey played Casey for a few McGee. Games. Yep. Yeah. Casey McGee, by the way, back with the Marlins. It was Larry Jansen that pitched for the Giants. Three and two, the count to Ishikawa. Strikes out. Cervelli left at third base. Mark Melanza trying to close this one out. Pirates leading seven to five. Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, this week's Inside Pirates Baseball, Sean Rodriguez shares the story of his family's journey from Cuba to America. Garrett Cole prevails against the cream of the crop and much more. Inside Pirates Baseball. Presented by Allegheny Health Network. Debuts tomorrow after postgame on Route Sports. Steve Blass, I'm Tim Neverett, 7 5. Pirates with a 2 run lead. Shot tank was activated. Gotta be careful out there. Don't feed him. Yep. And well, here he is. This is it, ninth inning. For outs number 25, 26, 27. And that would create the 30th save for Mark Melanson currently 
neck and neck with Tyler or Taylor Tyler Trevor Rosenthal of the Cardinals one of those take your choice Rosenthal has 30 also you got it right a mark recorded the 100th major league save of his career Monday night in Kansas City He's made 20 straight scoreless appearances here at PNC Park you get this Steve over his last 38 appearances he has an ERA of 0 24. Big number tonight, 38,371. Back to back setups, 13th of the season. And they have gotten their money's worth tonight. The long ball, boy, once again, second night in a row by the Pirates. And hoping to get the second win of the series. Emmanuel Burris, a switch hitter, coming off the bench to pinch hit. Hitting for the pitcher. The pitcher's spot was eighth. So Jansen not going to hit anyway, and here's Burris. And he bunts. Well, Lanson Fields throws, throws it away. But no advancement by Burris. Perfect bunt. And a base runner for the Nationals. Very well placed bunt right there to. Give him some action. Drops it down far enough where Cervelli is not a factor. Got a right hander once again that has a tendency to follow through a little bit toward first base. So you got to stop everything and move all the way back toward third. Burris runs very well, and that's a smart, smart baseball player right there. It's a base hit. Smart baseball play, I should say. Nobody out. Robinson at the plate. And this one hits the left field down the line. Curling foul. And a nice catch. So nice. We're going to consider it the first out of the ninth. Why not? So one out. And Robinson still at the plate. Just kidding. Nobody out. I like your plan better, though, Steve. <laughs> And a bouncer to first base. There's one. There's two. Three, six, three, double play. How about the quick release of Sean Rodriguez? Just attack that ball, attack that throw to second base. That got it going. Three, six, three. This is the he, yeah, he's already creating that angle with his body on the turn. His right hand first baseman have to do see he's getting that ball the body is already turning what a quick release great throw that creates the opportunity and they get it comfortably done huge play by Sean 114th double play the Pirates have pulled off this year and Taylor to left center field a base hit broken bat This series against the Nationals continues tomorrow as A.J. Burnett takes the mound for the Bucks. Our coverage starts at 6.30 with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason on Route Sports. Need I remind you, here's the man you want to get. You want no part of Bryce Harper in the ninth inning with the game on the line. You don't want that. Here's the man you want. Espinosa is 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. Switch hitter batting left-handed against Mark Melanson. Leave number 34 at the altar. Thirty of the 35 hits Mark has given up this year have been singles. Pitch to Espinoza. And this one down the first baseline foul for strike one. And Sean Rodriguez sitting on it. In case it had anything crazy in terms of spin. We've already seen one of those plays tonight. First bounce. Oh. Super Mo does such a, a great job of letting you see what's going on with the baseball. Incredible. How good that is. Everybody on their feet. Ready to make a whole lot of noise. I mean, a whole lot of noise. Oh, one pitch from Melanson to Espinosa. 
Strike two. Nationals down to the last strike tonight. Unhittable. Unhittable pitch. Fell off the table. He fell off the plate on the table. The plate fell off the table. 0 oh, 2 pitch coming from Melanson to Espinosa. And right back to Mark. Pirates win. And they both get the save. Those young men right there, they get half a save each. Now well, Melanson gets his 31st save, his club record 29th in a row. Gregory Polanco, big night with three RBIs, including a two run homer in the fifth. He went back to back. With Neil Walker, Pedro Alvarez put one off the river walk into the river. Up, baby. And Vance Worley will get the win out of this tonight. That's right. And the Pittsburgh Pirates made a statement tonight against the Washington Nationals and a statement against Max Scherzer, as good as he is. And he is one of the very best. The Pirates stood right up and got the job done, scored another seven spot, second straight night. Good stuff from the Pittsburgh Pirates in front of a sellout once again. 7-5 the final score. Pirates win their 56th game of the season. Let's go downstairs. Rob King, Kent Tacovia are waiting. Tim and Steve, thanks very much. Teak, on this recently concluded six-game road trip, there were four games in which the Pirates only scored one run. They return home back-to-back -back seven-run games and, of course, back-to-back -back wins. Well, of course, and, you know, you know with the Pirates pitching that, you know, if indeed they get the job done with the bats. They don't even need seven. They need four or five on a regular basis to win, you know, majority of those ball games. But, you know, obviously being able to put them up back to back after coming off of that tough stretch and do it against two pretty good pitchers. This isn't, you know, like you ran into somebody that wasn't really very good and they had a bad night or whatever. Two good pitchers. The Pirates were able to do that, put up the seven runs plus back to back nights, three home runs each game. You know, the Pirates need to be able to get back to hitting those. Uh, like they did last year toward the second toward, toward the end of the season back-to-back -back nights and home runs for uh, Pedro Alvarez and back-to-back -back home runs against Max Scherzer in the fifth hit by Gregory Polanco and Neil Walker who are standing by <laughs> with Robbie and Spikowski. Yeah, I got Neil Walker. Give me the stink eye right now enough talk to you in a second I want to talk to buddies. What's that? Can anybody see you get hit in the face with the ball in Kansas City? He has to point out my error that I made in Kansas City. Can we talk baseball now, Neil? Go ahead. I'm going to talk to Gregory first. Gregory, that was a heck of a bat by you against Max Scherzer. 12 pitches, five foul balls with a 3-2 count before you hit the home run. What led to that? You know, I just stayed fighting, fighting the ball because I know he throw the ball, like the ball come out a little bit. So I tried to stay on top of the ball. But after five foul ball. And he threw me that slider. He made a mistake, and I hit him. He struck you out two times leading into that at bat. What does that do for your confidence, knowing you could have success against a guy who might be the best pitcher in all baseball? You know, like I say, I just had to stay fighting because I know he's he's really good. But I, you know, I'm here for something. I I just had to stay fighting and stay with my plan and try to hit the ball. Thank you, Gregory. You got it, Gregory Polanco. What a night for him. We'll talk to Neil Walker back to back. Did you observe anything from Gregory's at bat that helped you maybe in yours? Well, he warmed down. There's no doubt about that. I mean, he uh, he battled his tail off and you know got it got it in the bat and he he, he did, certainly didn't want to get me out. So or he certainly wanted to get me out. So he's trying to be aggressive and I got a pitch to hit. What does this team take away from the last game against Ma uh, Max Scherzer when he no hit you that maybe helped you in the game plan tonight? Well, I think we we're a little more aggressive early on um, and I think that helped a little bit. I think that changed his game plan a little bit. Guys weren't just, you know, watching strike one, and he was throwing a lot of fastballs early, and uh, got some breaking balls after that. But we did a pretty good job throughout the lineup. Goodbye, Neil. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. How about it? Neil Walker, Gregory Polanco, back to back against Max Scherzer. Rob, first time since 2011. Anybody can say that against Max. Yep. That uh, someone has hit three home runs September 5th of 2011 against Oakland, and that is our Miller time presented by Miller Lite. The three home runs the Pirates hit. Pedro Alvarez, Tico's deep, a river ball, 460-foot bomb. 
back-to-back -back nights with home runs for Alvarez, and then back-to-back -back home runs in that fifth inning with Polanco and Walker. Yeah, I like the uh, the first reel when Pedro hits the home run, Tetcher just turns around Ramos and just puts his hand out for the umpire. Yeah. He wants a new ball. He knew as soon as that came off the bat that that one was gone. Gregory Polanco at the end of that 12 pitch at bat, you could see he and Scherzer were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Scherzer knew as soon as it was hit, it was out of there, so you know, a great at bat by him. And as Neil said, Yo, the Polanco at bat really put Scherzer, who's toward the end of his game, put him in a hole because he had to throw that many pitches, made a mistake to Neil, and he was able to get the, uh, the, the third home run on the night, the second of the inning, the back-to-back. -back. So, uh, yo, the Pirates offense keyed around the home run tonight, and the home runs came off of somebody who doesn't give up very many of them. Fun stuff to watch. The Pirates have been so good at PNC Park over the last several seasons. They improve on the season to 56 and 40. 17 games over 500 here at PNC Park as they pick up their 34th home win of the season. So the Pirates win by the final score of 7 to 5. Coming up next, we'll have highlights of this game, post game reaction from the Pirates Clubhouse. Uh, we'll also have our Ask Teak segment and plenty of analysis from Teak. All that and more coming up next on Pirates Post Game presented by the Allegheny Health Network.